Uh, welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for coming to the pre-application information session for uh, new applicants for the fiscal year 2022 Firearms Training and Technical Assistance Project, or FTAP, we call it, a special initiative. My name is Jason Patry, and I will be providing an overview of the solicitation along with my colleague, Aisha Battle, uh, who will be co-presenting, and Amanda Wilson, who will be overseeing the chat. Um, so feel free to write your questions into the chat box. Uh, we will cover questions at uh, the end, but as we go through, we might be able to answer those uh, as they come up, and Amanda will, will help us with that. Uh, Aisha Battle is also the point of contact uh, for this solicitation. It is not the intent, uh, nor is it, or is there really sufficient time to go over every aspect of the solicitation. Uh, therefore, this webinar will go over specific sections of the solicitation. Uh, all applicants are responsible for reviewing the solicitation in its entirety and following the instructions um, for all due dates for the application. Uh, and, and for submitting the application. It will be useful for you to have a copy of the solicitation on hand today, uh, either printed or downloaded as you uh, view this webinar, uh, as I will be referring to specific sections of the solicitation uh, as page numbers. Please note that while the solicitation is open, OVW staff cannot provide any feedback pertaining to the quality of your application or provide feedback on proposed project deliverables. OVW staff is available throughout the open period to address questions about the solicitation uh, application and application requirements. Please feel free to send all questions um, to our ICJR mailbox, that is ovw.icjr at usdoj.gov, and we will have that posted on one of the slides later on. But again, that's ovw.icjr at usdoj.gov. The first item you need to be aware of is a set of registration dates uh, that are important to note for the submission of your applications. To submit an application, all applicants must register online with the System for Award Management, also called SAM, uh, by October 1st of 2022 and register with grants.gov by October 12th of 2022. If your organization is already registered with SAM, and with grants.gov, please double check your registration and make sure it is up to date. Lack of registration or not renewing your registration on SAM or on grants.gov was the reason that some past applica applicants uh, were unable to submit their applications before the deadline. Failure to register in a timely manner or verify that your organization's registrations are active well before the submission of an application is not considered an unforeseeable technical issue uh, and cannot be used as the basis for a late submission. Um, application submissions uh, in response to the solicitation will be done through a two-step process. Applicants will submit the SF-424 and the SFLLL in grants.gov and then submit a full application in our Just Grants system. Um, applicants must submit the SF-424 and the SFLLL in grants.gov no later than 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursday, October 14th. Submit the SF-424 and the SFLLL as early as possible, but not later than 24 to 48 hours before the grants.gov deadline. The full application package is due in Just Grants by 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday, October 18th, 2022. Uh, applicants cannot submit their full applications in Just Grants until the grants.gov submission is complete. So please do not wait until the last few days to submit your SF-424 and your SFLLL in grants.gov. Uh, likewise, please do not wait until the last day or two to submit your application uh, in Just Grants. Also, please note that you will not be able to add any documents to your application after you submit it in Just Grants. So, if you discover you forgot 
To upload a required document, you will need to complete the grants.gov submission and resubmit your full application again in JustGrants. However, you will only be able to submit your full application again in JustGrants if the grants.gov deadline has not passed. Please make sure you do not finalize your submission in JustGrants until you are positive all the correct and required documents are uploaded. Hold on. Okay, I'll move on to the letter of intent. Uh, information on the letter of intent is located on page 10 of the application of the solicitation, excuse me. Although not required, it is encouraged that applicants submit a letter of intent to the ovw.icgr.usdoj.gov uh, email address. Uh, that is due today, September 27th. Uh, this will ensure that applicants are well positioned to successfully submit their applications by the deadline. Uh, letters should state that the organization is registered and current with their SAM uh, and grant.gov registrations, uh, in addition to the information requested in the letter of intent template, which is linked in our solicitation. Uh, the letter of intent will not obligate potential applicants to submit an application, um, and application, applicants do not, that do not submit a letter of intent are still eligible to apply. Okay, so let's talk about the Firearms Training and Technical Assistance uh, Project Special Initiative. Um, this information can be found on page five of the solicitation. So on May 26th of 2021, the U.S. Department of Justice released a comprehensive strategy for reducing uh, violent crimes, which uplifted the federal law precluding individuals with domestic violence, misdemeanors, and felony convictions, uh, as well as individuals subject to domestic violence protection orders, um, prohib prohibition from possessing uh, firearms. In support of the du Justice Department's uh, strategy, in fiscal year 2022, OVW funded 12 sites to participate in the firearms technical assistance project with the goal of reducing violent crime uh, and helping communities across the country reduce domestic violence, violence, homicides, and injuries committed by firearms. Uh, the 12 sites are the One Place Metro Alabama Family Justice Center, the City of Tucson in Arizona, Georgia Department of Community Supervision, uh, the City of Detroit in Michigan, uh, the Muskegee uh, Creek Nation, the City of Columbus in Ohio, the City of New York, New York, uh, the Young Women's Christian Association of Knoxville and the Tennessee Valley in Tennessee, uh, the City of Austin in Texas, the Vermont Network Against Sexual and Domestic Violence, uh, the City of Spokane in Washington, and the City of Yakima in, also in Washington. Um, through this special initiative, OVW seeks to support the training and technical assistance needs of the sites to enhance and strengthen com the community's response to domestic violence homicides. Uh, in support of the Justice Department strategy, uh, in fiscal year 2022, OVW funded these 12 sites with the goal of reducing violent crimes and helping communities across the country reduce domestic viol violence homicides and injuries committed by firearms. Through the FTAP Special Initiative, OVW seeks to support the training and technical assistance needs of the 12 sites to enhance and strengthen their community's response to, to the domestic violence homicides. Oh. There we go. The list, um, the list of eligible applicants for this special initiative can be found on page eight of the solicitation. Eligible applicants are national, tribal, statewide, or other nonprofit organizations. Uh, in rare circumstances, OVW may support institutions of higher education, state, local, or tribal governments, or governmental agencies uh, such as police departments, prosecutors' offices, uh, or probation departments, or local nonprofit organizations. However, all applicants must have the capacity 
and demonstrated history to provide training and technical assistance at the national level. Okay, the partnership requirements for AFTEP are detailed on page nine of the solicitation. The lead applicant must have a documented history of managing large scale project, both projects, both financially and programmatically, and demonstrate readiness and capacity to coordinate national level TTA uh, developed and delivered by their consortium partners. The FTAP required FTAP required the partnership of organizations and or individual consultants that collectively have a demonstrated history of providing TA on a national level. Expertise working with community and system-based stakeholders, uh, expertise working on issues related to firearms in the context of domestic violence, and expertise with tribal governments uh, and working with rural communities. Uh, partnerships must be demonstrated uh, through the Memorandum of Understanding. This solicitation only has one purpose area, which can be found on page six. The purpose of the OVW FTAP Special Initiative is to provide specialized uh, jurisdiction-specific training and technical assistance to the 12 FTAP pilot sites related to the implement implementation of state tribal and or federal domestic violence firearms policies and laws. The four OVW priority areas for fiscal year 2022 that pertain to this solicitation can be found on page six. Applicants must propose to address one or more of these four priority areas. Okay, out of scope activities are listed on page six of the solicitation. Please review it carefully. Uh, research projects and direct victim services are out of scope for the FTAP special initiative. Now, let's discuss the award period and amount, which can be found on page seven of the solicitation. This is a five year or 60 month project and with an initial award period of 36 months. The selected applicant may be invited to apply non-competitively uh, for supplemental funding to support the remainder of the 60-month uh, period. OVW estimates that it will make an award, an award of $2.5 million. This award will be made as a cooperative agreement, which will require an active participation uh, with OVW in the development and implementation of the project. Over the next few slides, I'll review the mandatory requirements of FTAP, which should be included within your proposed narr proposal narrative and inform your project activities. The list of requirements can be found on page eight of the solicitation are, and uh, are as follows. Uh, an OVW-sponsored training and technical assistance. Uh, OVW may conduct a program assessment or evaluation necessitating grantee involvement uh, therefore, recipients may be expected to dedicate some OVW-funded time and resources to participating in an assessment or an evaluation. A planning period with uh, the recipients, OVW, OVW program specialists, and project partners. Uh, the planning and dissemination of TTA. Be aware that each of the 12 FTAP sites has budgeted $10,000 to attend OVW mandated training and technical assistance. Part participate along with project partners in professional development opportunities identified by OVW. Assign a multidisciplinary TA team to each site that includes representation from victim services, community violence intervention, for example, uh, gun violence, uh, courts, prosecution, and law enforcement, uh, as well as tribal communities. And then finally, dedicate a project, oh, excuse me, we're gonna keep going on to the next slide. So dedicate a project director uh, with at least 0.5 FTEs 
to manage uh, communication and logistics. Create a formal process to share and address TA requests from the sites that include OVW. Create a pre and post evaluation process, not limited to a survey, uh, to evaluate TTA provided to each of the sites. Develop a TTA framework that is both responsive to and anticipates the needs of the sites. This framework must be comprised of basic and advanced methods to support the needs of each site to be approved by OVW within the first three months of the project. Establish a discipline specific, uh, excuse me, establish discipline specific cohorts comprised of virtual and in-person training opportunities and peer-to-peer -peer exchanges for the 12 AFTAP sites and other interested jurisdictions. And at a minimum host one all sites meeting annually to be attended by the 12 AFTAP sites and other interested jurisdictions. Right. Finally, create a two-fold documentation plan that will, one, work with the sites and, and capture their processes throughout the project to include highlighting community change, common themes, and site successes, and two, highlight best and promising practices identified throughout the project aimed at jurisdictions undertaking similar work. This documentation plan should complement the documentation and report, reports completed uh, by the 12 FTAP sites. Identify emerging issues in the field of firearms and domestic violence and develop relevant tools and documents to inform the sites and the field nationally on an ongoing basis. And create a housing product and create, excuse me, not a housing product, create and house products that can be utilized by the 12 FTAP sites and jurisdictions interested in addressing domestic violence and firearms. So we want to emphasize that this project is not just about providing TA to the sites, uh, but is also about documenting the project as a whole and capturing what is happening with the project. Uh, you'll need to create a structure to handle both requirements. Okay, and I will pass this on to Aisha. Thank you, Jason, and hello, everyone. <clears throat> so let's talk about application requirements. The required documents that should be included in your application is detailed on pages 10 and 11 are the proposal narrative, budget detail worksheet and budget narrative, and memorandum of understanding. Failure to include these documents may result in the application being considered substantially incomplete it may not be considered for funding. Next slide. Applicants are required to submit a brief abstract of the project in the Just Grants text box. The abstract is not scored, but is used throughout the review process. Please review the abstract section very carefully on page 11. Please only submit the abstract in the text box. Do not attach a separate abstract in Just Grants. Please do not summarize past accomplishments in the abstract. Next slide. The proposal narrative is worth 75 points and consists of four sections. The purpose of the proposal, which is worth 10 points. The capacity to implement the proposal, which is worth 15 points. What will be done, which is worth 35 points. And who will implement, which is worth 25 points. Please note that applicants' applications are limited to 25 pages, double space. The proposal narrative is discussed on pages 11 through 13 of the solicitation. For each section of the proposal narrative, applicants must respond to the criteria for each section, and responses must be in that specific section. Projects should be responsive to the purpose area description and the specific targeted audience that is listed here. Jason shared with you all the 12 sites, which are also appear in the um, solicitation. Please do not include attachments. The only attachment that should be included as part of your proposal narrative is located under the who will implement section. It asks you to submit a chart that evidences um, 
Oh, I'm sorry. A chart that reflects, um, I think, a more detailed timeline. Please pay attention to that. That is the only thing, the only attachment that is a part of the proposal narrative that will be utilized, that will be um, read and not considered part of the page numbers and not count against your 25 pages. As stated earlier in the presentation, your responses to each prompt should be informed by the mandatory requirements that Jason just reviewed. For the what will be done section, you must provide a clear link between the proposed activities, the need that you identify in the purpose of the proposal section. One question that we receive frequently is what types of delivery methods should an applicant propose in their project? The delivery methods applicants choose for the proposed project should be the ones that are best suited for the goals and objectives stated in the application. As stated in the criteria in the what will be done section, applicants must explain why a particular delivery method is appropriate for the target audience and profession and for that proposed purpose area as well as what is the applicant's proposed partners. As stated in the criteria in the what will be done section, applicants must explain why a particular delivery method is appropriate for a target audience or profession and for the proposed purpose area, as well as the applicants and project partners experience in providing their proposed delivery method. Please also remember when answering these prompts, as Jason shared earlier, that OVW anticipates at least a three month planning period, which will start immediately upon acceptance of the award. Um, as I stated a little bit earlier, I want to draw your attention to the criteria in the what will be done section regarding accessibility. All TA and training must be responsive to individuals with disabilities, individuals that are hard of hearing or deaf or a limited English proficient. I also wanted to note that um, the who will implement section asks applicants to provide a project staffing chart, which I um, referred to a minute ago. <laughs> the project staffing chart um, should detail who all is involved in the implementation of the project including the CS tax, the culture specific TA consortium that illustrates how project staff and partners will work together to complete the proposed activities, including lines of supervision and interagency reporting. This chart will not be counted towards the 25 page limit as stated earlier. Next slide. So moving on to the budget, which is worth 15 points and detailed on pages 13 and 14 of the solicitation. As stated previously, each purpose area has a budget, I'm sorry, all budgets must be submitted directly into Just Grants in the web-based budget worksheet and narrative. Please make sure you carefully consider the resources needed to successfully implement the proposed project to include the mandatory requirements. Keep in mind that the cost in the budget should correlate with what the applicant is proposing in the project narrative. And there must be a clear link in the budget and project narrative. For example, if your budget includes expenses for in-person training, then the in-person training should be listed in the project narrative. Also, for staffing, if you listed a position in the budget, you should be discussing that position in the project narrative. And the, and the first that that position or individual is mentioned should not be the budget. Please note that there is a requirement for OVW training for uh, technical assistance providers, which is included in the budget and should be included in your budget. So keep that in mind. Please also keep in mind that funding is that funding is to attend any required OVW meetings, such as the planning period mentioned in the previous slide. And that money should be used to to for your organization to travel to those required meetings. The funding is required for all applicants, 
even if you are located in the District of Columbia or the greater DC, North, Northern Virginia or Maryland areas. OVW strongly supports the use of consultants to assist you in providing TA to the sites. When using consultants, be sure to adequately compensate them for their work. Additionally, please be mindful that all applicants must make their training in TA accessible, which does not just include making events accessible, but also the translation of materials, the use of interpreters, and the use of captioning. Finally, please refer to the conference planning and expenditure limits in the solicitation to inform your proposal for in-person meetings and trainings. Applicants must complete and submit the web-based form in just grants for the budget worksheet and budget narrative. The web-based web budget is required and it is the budget that will be reviewed even if you attach a budget to your application. Next slide. So this slide highlights some resources that are available as you create the budget to be submitted with your application. Over the last couple of years, our Grants Financial Management Division has developed a detailed webinar presentation on how to develop a budget to be submitted by OVW applicants. This presentation addresses some of the challenges you may face with your budget and provides some insight on OVW's budget review process. This webinar can be found in the link on this slide. Additionally, the Just Grants page has resources on completing the web-based budget in Just Grants. Next up is the uniform guidance, which can be found at 2 CFR 200. Use your favorite search engine for this one. Other resources, including the DOJ financial guidance and the F special initiative solicitation itself should be utilized. We know this can be a lot of information to process. So if you have any questions about GFMD information, we, we have just discussed, please feel free to contact the GFMD help desk at 888-514-8556 or by email at ovw.gfmd at usdoj.gov. Now let's talk about the Memorandum of Understanding, or as you may know, the abbreviated the MOU, which is outlined on page 16 of the solicitation. The MOU is worth 10 points and is not, and is not part of the page limit of the proposal narrative. Please read this section very carefully and begin working on this section as soon as possible. OVW requires all potential TA providers to enter into a collaborative relationship with organizations or key con and key consultants who will bring the necessary subject matter expertise to the project. The MOU should connect to the proposal narrative activities and the budget. Applicants should start developing their MOU as soon as possible because of all the signatures that may be involved. OVW, um, applicants must only submit one MOU with all partner mm, signatures. Please do not submit multiple MOUs for each partner. All partners must sign one MOU and the MOU, um, should submit one MOU, my apologies. However, applicants may submit multiple signature pages. So for example, if you have eight partners, it might be difficult to get all eight signatures on one page. So you may want to have one signature per page, but please make sure that all the names are listed on each page so everyone knows who is signing the MOU. Electronic signatures are allowed but please make sure all electronic signatures are legible, especially if scanning or printing the signature pages. Next slide. Oh, I'm so sorry, Jason. Could you go back to the previous slide? <laughs> there is no page limit for the MOU 
but we do recommend that you do not go do not go excessive with the MOU pages and do not include information not requested in the solicitation. For example, we have seen MOUs with an excessive length of 15 to 30 pages, which did not even include the signature pages and the applicant still didn't respond to the criteria in the solicitation for MOU. So please remember to respond to the criteria for the MOU, which is located on page 16 of the solicitation. Next slide. <laughs> Moving on to other documents to be submitted with your application. Please review pages 15 through 17 for this information. This includes the non-supplanting letter and the indirect cost agreement, if applicable. Also, applicants must disclose all current and recent OVW awards as stated on page 17, which includes any current grant or cooperative agreement under any OVW grant program or an award that has been closed within the last 12 months from the date that the solicitation closed. Applicants must provide the information in a table using the sample form found on the OVW website. The link is provided in the solicitation. Applicants must also provide the same information regarding any current OVW award as well as any pending applications in which the applicant is a subrecipient. Additionally, applicants also must disclose all other federal grant programs from which the applicant currently receives funding or for which it has applied for funding in 2022 to do similar work. Applicants must provide the information in a table using the sample format found on the OVW website. Again, the link is provided in the solicitation to take you to the website where you can see the example chart. Both tables, if applicable, should be uploaded as attachments in Just Grants. Next slide. As a reminder, to make sure you complete the steps required in grants.gov and that your application is successfully submitted in Just Grants, it is recommended that applicants begin the submission process at least 48 hours prior to the deadline, but no later than 24 hours before the due date. Again, as I explained, or as Jason explained earlier, you do not know what technical issues might occur with uploading your application, and it also gives you enough time to address any errors in uploading your application. As also stated before, you want to make sure you register well in advance and also upload your application as soon as possible and not so close to the due date or due time because you want to anticipate any technology issues. There are limited circumstances for requesting a late submission. Please read this section to fully understand the circumstances and the steps for requesting a late submission. Any applicant requesting a late submission must follow the instructions listed in the solicitation, which includes requests due to severe weather or natural disaster and technical difficulties beyond the applicant's reasonable control. Missing the grants.gov deadline, as Jason shared earlier, is not a technical issue for late submission. If you have technical issues submitting the application online, you may request to submit a hard copy. All requests for hard copy submission must be sent to OBW via email no later than October 13, 2022. Please note that failure to begin the registration and application submission in sufficient time or not having the correct version of Adobe Acrobat are not acceptable reasons for a late submission. We have seen this many times where applicants in the past were not able to submit their application by the due date because they did not have the correct version of Adobe on the computer. They were going to use they were going to use to upload the application. So check your Adobe's. Thank you. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> when submitting your application in Just Grants, you will either be entering specific components directly into the Just Grants system, such as the budget and the abstract that you will be entering into text boxes or tables in this system, 
or you will be required to upload attached documents. As stated previously, all applicants must submit their budget in the web form directly in Just Grants. Because of the new two-step process using both Grants.gov and Just Grants, it is important that all applicants complete the Grants.gov portion as soon as possible so that you have enough time to submit each component of the application in Just Grants. When submitting your application in Just Grants, applicants may save their progress in the system and revise their application as needed prior to hitting the Submit button at the end of the application in Just Grants. Do not hit the submit button until you are done with your application and you are ready to submit the full application. The application submitter, entity administrator, and authorized representative will receive an email from Just Grants confirming submission of the application. Please make sure that there are individual that these individuals are continuously checking their email for confirmation of submission. OVW will not provide confirmation of applications that were received. Next slide. So final reminders, please read the solicitation thoroughly. This webinar was an overview of the solicitation and we recommend that you clearly and carefully read the solicitation. Please also respond to the purpose area description that was shared earlier and that could be found in the solicitation. Do not, com do not um, oh, I'm sorry, double check all of your attachments before uploading and label them accordingly. Do not submit multiple versions of the same application if you can help it and start your application at least 48 hours from the due date and time. Next slide. Additional reminders. There are multiple due dates that you must keep in mind during this application and development and submission process. The letter of intent, which is due today, September 27th, 2022. The SAM registration, which should be completed by October 1st, 2022. And the grants.gov registration, which should be completed no later than October 12th. My apologies, should be completed no later than October 14th. The grants.gov deadline is October 14th at 11.59 p.m. Please start that submission process as soon as possible, perhaps after this call today. And finally, the Just Grants deadline is 9 p.m. on October 18th, 2022. Applicants can begin the submission of their application in Just Grants once their submission once their submission and registration in grants.gov is completed. So it's very important to complete the, grant, the grants.gov submission step. With Just Grants being a new system to submit applications, please allow yourself an ample amount of time to submit the application in case you encounter any technical issues. Finally, please contact OVW, the OVW Just Grants Help Desk, Grants.gov, the OVW Grants Financial Management Division, and the OVW FTAP uh, solicitation, myself, points of contact if you have specific questions or issues pertaining to the solicitation and the submission of your application. For programmatic questions, you can contact me at ovw.icjr at usdoj.gov or call the OVW main line at 202-307-6026. For grants.gov issues, you may contact support at grants.gov and their phone number is 1-800-518 or 726. For the OVW Just Grants, contact ovw.justgrantssupport at usdoj.gov, don't forget the S on grants, or call them at 
1-800-273-4482. And for the Grants Financial Management Division, you may contact them at obw.gfmd at usdoj.gov or call 1-888-514-8557. Next slide, and with that, we will open the floor for questions. Please unmute yourself and ask your questions, or please enter your uh, questions in the chat box for Amanda to read. Hi, this is Darling. I have a question. How much time, if I was an applicant, how much time should I allocate for um, travel, site travel? That is an excellent question, Darlene, as there are 12 F FTAP sites and we want them to, um, they are prepared to receive intensive TA and on-site TA. And so we would imagine that you would be traveling to the sites multiple times a year to in in addition to at least one all site visit. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? I have one that popped in the chat. So, do you anticipate meeting in person during the planning period among partners? Excellent question. Yes, we do. We plan to meet in person as I think what the OVW um, TA set aside would be for is to meet with the project partners, the CS tax, our culturally specific training and technical assistance consortium as well as OVW staff working on the FTAP project, supporting the sites in person for planning. And that is anticipated shortly after the funding of um, the applicant that is selected to support FTAP is announced. Okay, we have another question. Will the sites have set aside travel money to join other events we could open to them? Yes, the sites will have money set aside. They all were required to set aside funding for travel. Now, of course, the sites along with the selected applicant and the CS tax will discuss, for instance, how many people would attend um, the all sites meetings. And so keep that in mind about what the, the sites having to attend and pay for and who all you would want to travel when planning those types of events to make sure that the, the sites have that support or that you are able to provide that support for them. And this question leads to another, I guess, pro tip around the solicitation. Of course, we recently funded these sites. They were funded in early, um, late May, early June. And so I invite you all to also go look at the solicitation that was released for the sites to see what their requirements were. That was the last question we have in the chat, Rachel. Thank you, Amanda. I guess I'll leave it a few more moment, moments just in case any pop into um, anyone's head that attended, but I will go ahead and thank you all for taking the time out with us. And of course, you can continue to contact us with any questions that come up um, as you review and answer the solicitation. And so I guess any more questions before we close out for the day?
there are no more questions. So thank you all so much for your time. We are excited by your interest in um, looking forward to seeing applications from you all. All right, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.